All right, so we'll get started. Um, so welcome, we're happy to have you here this afternoon. I'm Christine Botros, the Grants and Awards Programs Manager at the Charlotte Street Foundation. Um, so just so you know, this information session will be recorded. Uh, it will be shared on our website for anyone wishing to review um, an existing application before September 8th for the Rocket Relief Grant. Uh, so, also, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask at any time. And if privacy is important to you and you don't want to have your presence known, just, just type your question in the chat box, which is located at the bottom of your screen. <clears throat> and uh, you can direct the questions to Mason Kilpatrick if you don't want everyone to see who is asking. Uh, Mason might be able to answer your question directly or he will direct the question to myself, Heather, Adina or Margaret, um, who you're going to meet uh, shortly. And uh, just also just to keep in mind that when we're screen sharing, it can be uh, difficult for us to see the questions, but Mason will let us know um, and give us a nudge if we need to answer something. So this session uh, is for artists who have already applied for the Rocket Relief Grant during cycle one um, and you didn't receive the grant. So as an existing applicant, you now have the opportunity to review your application before September 8th for cycle two. Uh, and that's just so you can let us know if your circumstances have changed in any way. Um, this information session is also going to provide an overview of the grant. It's going to walk through how to uh, review application on call for entry or cafe, as we refer to it, and we'll answer any questions or concerns that you might have along the way. Uh, firstly, though, let me introduce the Rocket Relief team uh, from Charlotte Street and our partners, the Spencer Museum of Art and Arts KC. Uh, and, and both of our partners have worked with us through Cycle 1 and Cycle 2 and have generously provided financial and administrative support throughout the way. Um, Heather, would you like to introduce yourself first and then I'll just call on each of you to introduce yourselves. I'm Heather Beffa and I'm the Grants Manager at Arts KC. Great. Um, Let's see, um, Adina. Hi everyone, uh, nice to see you today. Uh, my name is Adina Duke. I'm with the Spencer Museum of Art at the University of Kansas. And along with Charlotte Street Foundation, the Spencer is one of the original partners in Rocket Grants, which has provided uh, project-based project awards for the past 10 years, thanks to the Andy Warhol Foundation. So I wanna give a little acknowledgement to them because the credit really goes to them for seeing the need to realign our Rocket Grants program uh, with, uh, with the need um, of COVID-19 this year. Um, so we hope to return to those project-based awards in the future um, when, when the need is diminished. Um, but for now, we're really thrilled that that impulse um, from the Warhol Foundation um, allowed us to reach out to other partners like Arts KC and funding uh, to be able to go into this cycle too. Um, I also want to thank each of you, uh, the artists on the call, for the work that you do and uh, the spirit that you bring to the community and to each of us. Um, and just want to recognize that and thank you for that. Thanks, Adina. Um, Elizabeth? Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Knost. I'm the Director of External Affairs at the Spencer Museum of Art and work with Adina. And I'm also happy to see you all here today and hope we can answer whatever questions you might have. Thanks. Um, and uh, Margaret? Hi there, I'm Margaret Perkins McGinnis and I work with Charlotte Street Foundation and I'm happy to be here and happy to, to see and to meet each of you. And Mason. Hey everybody, I'm Mason Andrew Kilpatrick. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at Charlotte Street Foundation. Um, I won't be speaking today, but I will be fielding in questions from the chat. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to send them into the chat over here to the right or at the lower um, bar of your screen, and I can bring them up and make sure that they're heard in the general discussion. Oh, thanks, Mason. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, talking about where you can find information about cycle two. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Oh, uh, Mason, would you be able to...
Okay, let's try that again. Okay. All right. Can everyone see the Rocket Relief Fund? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So um, if you go to the Charlotte Street Foundation website, www.charlottestreet.org, you can go straight um, the, the top um, labels there. You can see Rocket Relief Fund and you can see the Apply Now button. Um, and you can simply click on that and it will just take you to this website all about the Rocket Relief Fund. Um, and you'll see on the side there, there is also the call details that are in the PDF. It's got all the information, um, eligibility criteria, everything you need to know about Cycle 2. Uh, you can also then click directly onto the Apply Now Online. That will take you directly into the cafe. Um, and if you log in as yourself, you should be able to pull up your application that you had already submitted back in cycle one. And we'll have um, we'll have Heather walk through that um, a little bit later as well. So uh, just a few things to um, just keep in mind. Uh, the grant is still $1,000, $1,000 flat stipend. There's no restrictions. You can use it however you choose. There is $50,000 in the second cycle. Um, and again, we will select 10 artists each week. Uh, so we anticipate, because it's 50,000, uh, that cycle two will then run for five weeks. Uh, this could be extended if we're able to raise additional funds, uh, or we'll, we'll just give out more grants during that five week period, if that's the case. Now, as an existing applicant, um, <clears throat> You now have the opportunity to revise the application by September 8th, after which, after that date, you won't be able to. However, what you can do is you can email me um, at rocketrelief at charlottestreet.org to request access to make changes to your application after September 8th, if there is something that you really feel that you need to share with us. Um, now, the first draw of uh, applicants will be reviewed on um, September 18th and artists will be notified on Friday, September 25th. And the final 10 artists will be announced uh, October 25th, uh, which means that the deadline for the final draw is currently set for October 18th, um, unless we extend. So cycle two, like the first cycle, will use a lottery method, which Margaret's going to provide an overview in a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> so you do need to make any edits through CAFE as we can't review any changes that you make uh, through e email or um, via hard copy. Um, and I'm just saying this because I have had a few artists email saying, oh, can you please add this? And I've had to respond back and just say, yeah, can you please go through CAFE and, and make those um, changes there, please? Um, and again, if you have any challenges throughout the application process or with the CAFE system, just email rocketrelief um, at charlottestreet.org and more than happy to help. Or you can email any of us um, individually as well. The um, eligibility criteria pretty much remains the same as Cycle 1. Uh, the main point that I, I guess I want to reiterate is that um, that you apply as an individual artist. Uh, so we did notice in cycle one, some organisations may have applied or non-profits may have applied and they're not actually eligible. But if you're an artist associated with uh, an organisation, that's completely fine. Um, or if you're an artist running that organisation, that's completely fine too. But as long as you're applying as an individual artist and that you're showing your own generative creative practice um, as well. So that's um, just the main point I wanted to share with you. The artistic disciplines um, remain the same and, and uh, you can self-identify as a visual multi multidisciplinary artist, a theatre artist, um, a dancer or a musician or a performative storyteller and just you can just read through that, uh, what all of that encompasses here on our website as well. 
All right. Um, so before we get into the, the nuts and bolts of the application process, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our experience during cycle one and what we learned and the adjustments that we've made for cycle two. Uh, so if you go again here, um, top tab, whoop, and sorry, let me see, here we go. And if you scroll down, um, you can see frequently asked questions, the COVID-19 resources. So if you're looking for additional resources, but also down here, you can see what we learned from cycle one. Here. Um, and there's a lot of information in this. So I'll let you guys look at it at your own leisure, but just a few points that um, I want to just talk about. So um, in cycle one, you know, we began with $120,000 and an additional $73,000 was raised, which uh, got to us to a total of $193,000. Uh, we had almost 600 artists apply uh, for the grant in cycle one, and we awarded 143 grants um, and using $143,000. So that now leaves us with the $50,000 for cycle two. Now, the original $120,000 was uh, restricted to artistic disciplines, which is the reason when you look at these two pie charts uh, in front of you, uh, you might see a disproportion between all applicants who applied and the recipients around artistic discipline. Um, this is really noticeable, for example, when you look at theatre artists, you know, of the almost 600 applicants, 12% of them were theatre artists. Um, but of the 143 grants that we gave, 30% of the um, awardees were uh, theatre artists. And this was the only reason was, was because at, in Cycle One we had Theatre League involved and they uh, provided $40,000, um, which was for theatre artists specifically. So the difference with Cycle One um, and Cycle Two is that the funds that you see for Cycle Two, the fifty thousand dollars that we have, is unrestricted and won't be, um, I guess, influenced by artistic discipline, but rather, you know, the uh, risk factors that are impacting um, people who are applying for the grant. Um, okay, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit further down here. Um, as we look at race and ethnicity. Um, so the other notable change uh, that you're gonna see in cycle two is the use of demographic information in the selection process. Uh, and of course it remains anonymous. We don't uh, share people's details in any way. Uh, so in cycle two, we are, we're, we're committed to awarding at least 60% of the grants to artists who self-identify as black, indigenous or artists of colour. Um, cycle one did not factor uh, race and ethnicity into the selection process. Uh, but what we did find, um, even though we didn't use demographic information, so I'm just going to scroll up again, we did find that 28% um, of people who did apply identified as BIPOC and 28% of the grants that were, that were awarded were also given to applicants who were um, who identified as BIPOC. Um, and then what we've also noticed is, um, so when I go down here, all right, uh, so we know that BIPOC communities are, you know, two to three times more likely of being impacted by COVID-19, um, by getting sick or, you know, of dying from, from, the, um, from COVID. Um, and that there are certain risk factors uh, that, that we saw when we compared race and obviously with the risk factors on the application as well. So, so this graph um, shows, for instance, that um, BIPOC applicants were almost 50% more likely to not have health insurance um, compared with people who identified as white or Caucasian. Um, if you look at the financial safety net, which is one of the main risk factors that our applicants experienced, but 78% of BIPOC artists um, did not have a financial safety net compared to 57% of uh, Caucasian artists. 
Um, so on that note, it is, it is, like I said, a lot of information. So I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, so take your time looking at it. Uh, so we are going to now, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. So let's move on to the next piece. And I want to ask Margaret if you can uh, talk about um, the decision making that goes um, into into the Rocket Relief grant um, and the waiting system that's used. Sure, thank you. Um, does anybody have questions about anything that's been set up till now before I go? Okay, great. Um, so the way that the Rocket Relief Fund was formed was, was really modeled after a, um, a national artist relief program, which I'm going to drop into the chat box. It is called Artist Relief, and we would encourage each of you to apply to that as well if you're eligible. Um, this is a national fund that was formed at about the same time. Well, they were, they were a few weeks ahead of uh, Charlotte Street and um, Arts KC and the Spencer in forming our Rocket Relief Fund. And um, what we learned from them was that they were employing a model that is a weighted lottery system. So we want to be really transparent about how our selection process works and want to tell you a little bit about what a weighted lottery system does and how it's formed. Um, so a weighted lottery system essentially assigns um, a greater chance or a greater likelihood of being selected based on the number, in our case, based on the number of uh, risk factors that a person, um, a, that, that are attributed to a person. Because we, we understand that having one risk factor, one financial implication of the pandemic um, is quite a bit different and can be quite a bit harder to, or uh, uh, easier to overcome than having five, six, seven different risk factors. So the way that the lottery system works is that essentially there's a random selection process, but the um, number of entries into this lottery that might that a person might have will be impacted by the by the level of risk that they articulate. Um, as Christine mentioned in this case, um, we saw that the, um, the lottery system was really effective in the first round at, um, at giving some level of, of um, I would say equality in terms of the way that the, um, the outcome of who was selected, but we recognize that there um, are certain communities and particularly communities of color that are really much more um, demonstrably impacted by COVID and the pandemics and the economic impacts. So in this case, um, one thing that we did not require and still do not require is that you provide um, your uh, race or ethnicity in the form. However, if you are one of the, the um, communities that we've identified, if you have um, Black, Indigenous, or other person of color and demographic background, and you articulate that, you would have, um, in this case, a greater chance of being selected. So it is worth revisiting your application if that's something that you would not have entered on the first round, um, knowing that we've adjusted our process. Um, let me know if anybody has any questions. I've got a question, yeah. Sharon Rodriguez. Sure. Um, where would we indicate that on the um, application? And I'll, I will let, actually, Heather is going to run through the application. Okay. In just a moment, and she is going to run through it from the um, perspective of a person who had applied once already. So hopefully that will answer your question. But I know that um, everybody on the call will back me up on this. If you encounter any issues, we um, 
we want to help you. So please let us know if there's a, an area where you're having trouble with the technology or um, would like more clarity about what a question is asking. And I have found that uh, already because I did have a question. Christine answered my question very quickly and uh, stuck with me until I got where I needed to go because I was not quite understanding all of the process. I'm glad that you shared that. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Um, I'm not surprised that Christine was awesome in helping you, but I think that's good for everybody to know. We mean it. Let us know if you have any trouble. Um, so, oh, any other questions? All right. Um, so yeah, Heather, Heather's going to run through the application process on CAFE and you'll see the section where the demographics comes up and where you can uh, select um, how it is that you wish to identify. And if, if anyone on this call had not applied previously and is applying for the first time, reach out to us about that too, if, if you need um, additional help in that way. And so, oh, sorry, so Beth, was that a hands up on that? Okay, um, so we, we had an information, I'm just saying this because we had an information session yesterday, so that will also be on our website, um, so you'll be able to watch that too if you need. All right. Um, it's really quick. I think, Beth, if you were trying to say something, you were still muted, so we didn't hear you, just in case. I couldn't tell if you were, if you were talking or not. Okay. There we are. So no, I was, uh, thank you. I can't actually hear uh, this. Uh, so that's why you're seeing the ceiling. I have to hold my phone up to my ear. And so I'm missing all of the graphs and everything you're referring to. So as long as you have this all up on your website, I'll go there if that's okay. You do have it all up there because you had, like you said, so that's what I'll do since I'm not able to watch it and hear it at the same time. I had to, uh, I'm at work and uh, I teach at a fitness club. <laughs> so, well, thank you for doing this. So thank you so much. And I'll go check out the, the, uh, yeah. the website. Do whatever Thanks works for best, doing yeah. this. And it, all right, thank you. Bye for now. <laughs> Also, we got a um, we have a question coming from Maria Perez Andujar from the chat. Uh, Maria says, "I was late due to technical issues. What kinds of art does this apply to, and where can I find this out?" Christine, would you like to take that, or I'll also answer it within the chat too. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, Maria. Yes. So, uh, again, if you go to our website www.charlottestreet.org, and you'll find the artistic disciplines that are, that are actually listed uh, there. And so, um, as you were saying, that, um, so, you know, if you're a visual or multidisciplinary artist, if you're a theatre artist, a dancer, a musician, um, a performative storyteller, so the grant will cover all those disciplines. Um, so, yeah, just, and if you just go in there and read, and it, and it does elaborate what each of those um, actually encompasses. And I'll add one quick detail that Christine mentioned earlier. If you are a part of an organization, um, whether it's a nonprofit or a, a gallery or um, an artist collective, it's great to, that we know that information if you'd like to share it. But, but what's really important is that you're applying as an individual artist. So if um, I were to apply, I'm not eligible because I work for Charlotte Street Foundation, but if I were to apply, I would apply as Margaret. And um, maybe I would mention that I work for Charlotte Street Foundation or if you're a fa on faculty or something like that. But at the end of the day, the funds would go to an artist. So if, if um, the um, story that you're articulating about lost income or anything like that is about the business or the organization, be sure and really tell us how it's impacting you, the individual artist. All 
All right. Uh, well, um, I'm, I'm going to walk you guys through, but I wanted to add in um, ArtsKC's involvement in, in the partnership. Uh, being part of Rocket Relief Cycle 1 uh, was a really fantastic experience um, as an administrator um, to, to come together with other organizations and work regularly with um, Christine, Margaret, Adina, Sarah Lynn, um, and um, of course, Amy Kligman. Um, and, um, and, and of course, uh, Mason and Elizabeth as well. Um, so, uh, but before this, this project, we, we didn't work together regularly. Um, so, um, so definitely a lot of um, learning together. This is a new type of grant making for all of us because most of the time what we do is project-based and not need-based grant making. Um, and I think that that's true for arts administrators across the country. Um, so it's, it's really a, um, uh, an interesting moment um, atop all of the, the major difficulties of our time this year. Um, at the end of cycle one, um, there were there were so many artists that we weren't able to help support, um, and the the art that we got to learn about in cycle one was incredibly inspiring. Um, there's so many uh, hardworking, ambitious, creative people in our community, and so many are in a, a very difficult state of need. So. Um, that really uh, pushed me to talk to the leadership at Arts KC and the board of directors in order to make sure that we could participate in cycle two. And, and we're very proud to um, be able to do that and honored to help uh, continuing support artists in our community. Um, we will make inspiration grants later this year. The application's not open yet. Just pay attention to our social media to stay on top of that. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to share my screen and um, walk you through um, making any adjustments to your application um, as um, returning applicants. Um, and as, as Christine and Margaret and Nadina were saying, um, if you are a first, um, a brand new applicant, then you'll need a little bit more um, instruction. And so you could should see our, um, our video from yesterday for that. <clears throat> All right, so uh, sharing my screen. Uh, sorry, I have two screens. Can you see cats right now or can you see um, the website? We see the, the website. website. All right, great, thank you. Um, so um, depending on how you originally applied, you might have come to this um, straight, uh, straight through Charlotte Street. You might know Charlotte Street best. Um, from Arts KC, you may have come through our website. We've got a link to it on our website. And if you know the Spencer Museum of Art best, you may have come to this through that website. But all three of them link back to the Charlotte Street website. Um, that's where all of the core information about the application is and the link to the application process. So clicking on apply now online, it will take you to callforentry.org. You may have already encountered this platform before in other applications. Um, if this is your first time working with it, then I'm glad to show you some little finicky things about it that maybe make it a little bit easier. <clears throat> All right. I have multiple logins here for multiple tests. So, um, okay. So as, as a a uh, fictional artist. Uh, I'm Zucchini 2 in this case, and Zucchini 2 applied um, in the first round. And I believe all of the existing applicants, current applicants, um, have had their applications marked incomplete right now. Is that correct, Christine? Yeah. Okay. So if you applied in the first round, right now your application is marked as incomplete to allow you to modify it. Click on modify. And the content that you put in the application will still be there. Um, some text, some questions, and it, you may have applied months ago. So just to point out, these questions are, are shaped to um, uphold the eligibility criteria that's outlined in the information page on the Charlotte Street website. 
So, you know, for one thing, you need to be a, um, an artist for this. And then what type of artist are you? You click one of these. Um, another part of eligibility is if you, if you work for one of the partners in the, in the um, grant program, uh, such as Arts KC, Charlotte Strip Street Foundation, or Spencer Museum of Art, then you, you, cannot, um, you cannot apply for this. So this is just where you confirm that um, that's not you. A little bit more information. So this, this box is where part of where you enter something that helps us confirm that you are an artist. And um, from looking at applications in the first round, I know that many of you fulfilled um, in, uh, evidence that you are an artist very well. But just know this is part of what we're looking at. So um, I don't have an artistic website myself, but if I did, this is where I would put it. Um, you can also um, link us to an online CV or resume, or um, <clears throat> put in a link to a public event um, where you're listed as a performer, as an exhibitor, as, as part of the art event. Um, uh, it's best if that is within the last two years, because that's part of what we're looking for, is that you're a practicing artist that's been active in the last two years. Um, the impact of the coronavirus, this is where um, you checked some, box when you, some boxes when you first applied. If your circumstances have changed, you may want to change some of these boxes. Um, uh, for example, if you've lost a, the ability to work due to caretaking duties for a family member um, or, or someone else in your household, um, then that's a box that you can um, take here in addition to others from before. You can also uncheck boxes uh, from your earlier application um, to more accurately reflect your current situation. The narrative, the narrative is where you can give us some more information that might not be covered by one of these earlier selections. Um, uh, for example, one thing that's not listed here is if, if you don't have a car anymore and that's impacting your ability to work, for example. That, that's the type of detail you could tell us in this narrative. Um, I know that it can be very um, vulnerable and emotionally taxing to write these things and um, just know that we treat your information with respect and anonymously um, and are just using the information to, um, to consider um, the applications um, in the lottery. Uh, uh, I also recommend when, you, when you're typing in a field like this in a grant application, just to keep your information together, you might want to draft that in an email to yourself or in a Word document or a text document so that if there's any trouble with the system, then you don't lose it. Um, so uh, that's where you will write any of that. The writing that you wrote earlier in the year, if you want to change any of it, you can change that now. Again, this set of uh, boxes um, about circumstances that you put you at additional financial risk. Um, if say, when you first applied, you did not have unmanageable debt, but you do now, uh, then you could check that box. You can. Also, uncheck boxes if other um, elements of your situation have changed. So um, part, of, part of doing cycle two, um, technically we couldn't change the form um, in the system. So it's important to understand that, that the following questions that are, are um, about your personal characteristics um, that are reflected in our demographic um, analysis um, it is true that this information is still optional, um, but now we have an added element in our process um, in which um, uh, people um, who are African American, Latino, and Latinx, um, or Native or Indigenous, um, have a greater chance of receiving a grant. So, if you, if you would like to include uh, that information here, um, you can choose multiple boxes if that applies to you. Um, it, it, as part of um, increase, increasing your chance to get a grant, uh, then you can do that. If you wish not to include that information, uh, that is all up to you um, and we respect your choice. The other elements of, um, of personal characteristics um, and demographics uh, are still 
optional and do not weigh into um, an increased chance of getting a grant. So your gender, your age, um, disability status, career stage, um, we're collecting this to understand the applicant pool. Um, and again, it is um, kept anonymous and um, uh, the information that um, Christine was sharing earlier is um, a summation of that information in for graphs, so it doesn't track back to you. Um, if you'd like more information, you can change um, this area from what you originally um, signed up for. Um, you can change this area if you like about how you heard about rocket relief. And you may have typed in some testimony about your experience in this final box, um, and you may want to change it or update it. This is the only area that we are explicitly looking for something that we can share with the public in order to um, potentially raise more funds or just be able to express the um, be able to express and describe the value of the grant program to um, our donors. So um, this is where you would write that information uh, there. It's really helpful to hit this save button at this point. And I'm going to go back to the entry just to go over it, just to make sure my changes are still in there. Okay, so this is the second time I've gone into this and earlier in testing, when I came back to Zucchini 2's application, I found that not all of my test cats were still in there. And in order to submit this thing, you have to have five work samples um, in your portfolio that are attached to this application. So right now you can preview them. And it, this time it, it seems to have kicked out all five. And so there's, there's nothing attached to this application. You have to select them. Oh, okay. All right, never mind. I'm sorry. They were attached. Systems. Um, uh, this is where I attach these images. You can attach audio samples or video samples. Um, there are system limitations on the size of audio or video sample that you can list. Um, uh, I, I think that usually short videos that are no more than three or five minutes long um, uh, are more than adequate. Um, and we may not watch the entire thing um, at that stage. But um, th there's kind of a um, either or or both kind of thing here in terms of acknowledging, um, of determining whether or not you are an artist, since this is a needs based grant for an artist. Um, you can link us to your website in the earlier section um, or to your online um, CV or um, an event that you were a part of. But you can also attach art samples to show us that you are an artist. If you feel it's covered in the website or other materials you gave us, then you can attach kind of anything in the portfolio area, um, as I did here. And this just is an example too, because the system's going to ask for five things. And so that's why I just used the same cat five times. Um, and you could do that too. If, say, the image you want to use is your headshot, you could attach the same headshot five times. Um, just make sure that there is adequate um, documentation of yourself and your activities in the last two years as an artist um, in the online um, materials. So I hit save and oh, it gives me this extra option that doesn't, I don't think that we really need to worry about that. And then you must choose my changes are complete. Okay, and then change status to received. So now that we're back in the main menu, we can see that my application for Rocket Relief Cycle 2 is in progress. And I can go back and look at it, but I can't make changes to it at this stage. Are there any questions about the process? I, I posted a question and because I know that this is something that even we have um, asked ourselves about a bit. When you changed your status to received, that actually means, Christine, that we have received it 
That means yes, it is. Uh, it has been received. It's in. It's in the system, and it will be going through the lottery. Yes. And um, if if someone doesn't change anything, it's automatically re-entered in the pool. Um, so if oh yeah so yes yeah. so on september 8th if you haven't made the changes i will go in and change the status of the application so that it is received does that make sense so either way um anything will be in the pool whether it's changed or unchanged starting on september 8th correct i have a question um, on the education part, where it's listing like the degrees or whatever, what do you do if you had some college experience but you didn't complete it all the way? Do you just put high school or what? Um, yeah, that's fine. It, it, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't, like I said, this information is just for us to understand who's applying. It doesn't really have, that won't have a bearing on um, um, on, on your actual application, that makes sense. yeah. It's good to have that question though, because that is something that we hadn't noticed. So as we develop forms going forward, that's a great um, modification that we can make. So please feel free to give us that kind of, um, those kinds of questions will help us um, make sure that everybody is choosing something that reflects that. I think there is, isn't there also a category where it says other? I think under education as well. I'm just trying to remember, sorry. There, there might be as an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do see other on there. Any, any additional questions about the, the application process? Um, well, while we have you with us, is there anything that um, you'd like to share or tell us about what's going on um, that you'd like people to know about? You talking to me specifically? Oh, yeah. No, not just you, but all, all, all you artists that are here with us right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, we'd love to hear from you, Source. <laughs> of course. If you have any virtual events that are coming up or, and you know, you, if you'd like to share your website, throw it in the chat box and, you know, we just want to give you an opportunity to tell us what's happening these days. Well, just connected, yeah. Um, for me, um, it's I don't know. In, in March, um, we had a lot of things going on. Me and my band, and just me personally, and, and the things that I do with artist education as well. And um, I had just taught a hip hop class at Blue Springs. We had just did a music festival in Columbia, Missouri. We was headed south by Southwest. And then when South by Southwest canceled, everything else canceled. Of course. And um, it seems like I haven't been able to get any further than where I was at in March. Um, I mean, I've, I've had some, I've done some online things for like the local library and some other things as far as like teaching hip hop songwriting. I've done some online performances for fundraisers and things like that. I've applied to every grant that you can think of for relief. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's been real tough. Um, just trying to uh, figure out what to do. So um, luckily I was able to get that stimulus and that really helped us out. Uh, my family, um, I did some remodeling on my house and um, uh, you know, we, we um, had to use it all, but uh, it, it really helped at that time. So my wife is a teacher, so she's at home um, teaching online. She's an instructional coach. So she has a very important role with, with the Kansas City School District. She's always busy. All my children are at home. Um, they go to they go to um, they go to uh, um, 
crossroads. So school has already started for them and they are, you know, online and working all day. So during the day, I don't have a lot of time to work on my art and trying to do stuff. So it's usually on the evening or on the weekend. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just been real difficult, but I'm still just plugging away and trying to be attached to whatever's going on as I can, so. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with us, Source. Appreciate it. I wanna echo that, it's, it's um, valuable to hear how people have been managing throughout and hope that you continue to, to make it work and that programs like this bring some relief. Um, oh, thanks for sharing your website to Sharon on the um, on the chat there. Yeah, um, and I'll <clears throat> say a little bit about what I've been doing. I'm not unlike um, Saucy is the name that I remember out of the gentleman that just spoke in March. I think we just lost you, Sharon. Um, oh, well, if, if Sharon comes back to us, if she does, she can tell us what she was about to say. But um, in the meantime, um, Elizabeth, is there anything you'd like to uh, share with everyone about what the Spencer Museum of Art is doing at the moment? Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, we we still unfortunately haven't reopened our galleries um, to the general public. We are planning to begin serving KU classes by appointment soon, as, as long as everything uh, stays stays stable at the university but we are hoping to have people back at some point in the fall and until then i would just encourage everyone to head to our website um, not only can you see the recent most recent updates on our reopening news but also we do have a few virtual um, engagement opportunities for you including some virtual exhibitions so because our exhibitions aren't open in person we've um, added some additional content for some of them that's exclusively online and we actually have another one that'll be launching next week so i'll put our our, uh, our website and our also the subscription link for our e-news in the chat and it looks like sharon's back with us so she i am yeah I saying. yeah yeah i don't know what happened i got disconnected or something the wonders of technology <laughs> anyway uh in february i got to do a show at Mid-American Nazarene College and spoke to a group of um, art, um, art students there. <clears throat> and the teacher actually bought one of my books in addition to the series that I'm doing on the homeless. I also have two books that I have published. And my goal this year was to publish a third one. But anyway, uh, so, um, found out that the art instructor used my book in her class and it was very inspirational. So that may be a testimony that I can put in my application. I also found out that some of my books have been used at Metropolitan Community College in their journalism department. So <clears throat> I've had some success, but it all went to hell in a handbasket, just like the world in March. And I do have, uh, I'm part of a show, Audacity, the women's um, movement to uh, women's rights, I think is the name of it. <clears throat> and then um, in early September, I'm going to read from uh, both of my books at a No Divide Kansas homeless event. So that's all I've got going. Otherwise, I've been going crazy trying to figure out what to do next, where to go next, where to apply. <clears throat> so I really appreciate your willingness to see us succeed in, in this grant process. That's helpful. Um, because there are days where I just want to curl up and curl up in a ball and say, "Done. I'm not a, a photographer anymore. I'm not an artist." And 
then what do I do? So having something like this gives me the motivation to keep going. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you so much. You, all of your work is what gives us the motivation to keep going. So we appreciate it and we hope that you just keep moving forward. Keep making. Thank you. You took the words out of my mouth. Thanks, Margaret. Um, and, and look, at any time, um, please feel free to reach out to any of us if there's anything else that we can do to support you. Um, please, please, please do. Um, okay, so I think we're, we're coming towards the end of our time. But um, so I just want to thank you guys for, for bearing with us and, and I hope this helps um, with, your, with your application process and really the best of luck to all of you. Please, please take care. Thank you. You're welcome.